Sasha and thank you so much for joining me today. Well, today I have a project which I absolutely love. I fell in love with this gorgeous little Santa. Now, I don't do a whole lot of Christmas uh, cards. I certainly do do some. And so I just put a few here on my channel, here and there. I will make a playlist with... Um, anything Christmas that I have done. I don't usually do too many, but I'm not going to lie. I'm pretty tempted to keep redoing this card because this one turned out pretty good in my opinion. And even better, it wasn't too tricky to make at all. So I have taken a piece of four inch mint tape. Now this is just a low tech tape. You absolutely, if you wanted to, could use something thinner or you could just use a piece of copy paper with some removable adhesive on the back. And essentially what we are doing, we are just finding somewhere to ground Santa. So he doesn't look like he's floating. It gives him a real space to be. I'm going to put this on a little bit of um, a piece of scrap paper because we are going to be making ourselves an ink blended background. And I'm going to throw every color blue that I have at this because I want to make sort of like a night sky. We're going to have some tumbled glass, salty ocean, mermaid lagoon, blueprint sketch, and chip sapphire. Now I actually end up only using four of these colors. I'm going to start off with some tumbled glass. By no means are finger dobbers the most easy uh, way to um, do ink blending. You can use some ink brushes, you can use makeup sponges, you can use cotton balls, you can use uh, ink blending brushes, you can use whatever you have on hand, but um, they are just convenient for me and I find that I get a really good blend on this Frenchieville brand paper that I use um, and I'm just going back and forth so I don't put the colors away so I end up using um, tumble glass down the very bottom salty ocean uh, mermaid lagoon and then blueprint sketch up the very top and I just keep going back and forward go back and forward it won't look absolutely perfect but it doesn't need to by the time we put an image in front of this as well now this turns out way better than I anticipated but at the moment it wasn't quite night ish enough for me it didn't quite have the vibe that I was going for so I'm going to add in a little bit of chipped sapphire ink now this one came out really strong I've clearly just re-inked it as well so it was very juicy. Now I'm going to stop this right here because at this point I'm going to change from a card front, which I was ink blending on, on I redid it off camera onto a card base because I want this to be directly onto the card base. So I've done exactly the same technique except for I have the card folded in half here on a scrap piece of paper and I did exactly the same colors, exactly the same blending. So if you're wondering why it just changed, it's because I changed my mind from going from a card front onto a card base. Um, then I add a very small touch of black soot around the outside edges. Not too much. I came in very, very lightly, just with a little bit. And then I'm going to be pretty happy with this at the moment. One thing I did want to add is a little bit of the um, chip sapphire. I'm going to put some little splashes in front of this. Now, test your little splash, test your little speckles to see if they're going to be just what you want whether you need to change your size brushes or anything like that. But I was pretty happy with what I got on my test piece of paper. So I'm going to do some little splatters on my, it's not really uh, splatters, it's just going to create that sort of night-ish sky effect. I wouldn't say night sky is the, is the perfect description of what I'm creating, <laughs> but it's, you know, it's a background. I'm going to put that aside and we're going to let it dry to work on our Santa. Now, usually I avoid sort of like big colored images because um, I don't feel confident in my coloring, honestly. I know there are so many amazing people in the comment section that say that I do just fine and that, you know, but uh, I just don't feel confident. And I guess because I put my art work out there on the internet, I don't know, I just don't feel confident. So I usually avoid images like this, but we're going to, I, I really, I love this gorgeous Santa. He makes me happy to look at. And that's what's most important when I'm card making, when I'm creating, it makes me happy to look at it. And I really enjoyed this process. So today we color. And I am going to stamp out two of these just because they are right here and ready to go. 
So I only use one today and then I will put the spare one in the back of the stamp packaging so that I can st skip that step next time. I will say if you wanted to, you could absolutely cut out pieces. I've done this with a, uh, a dress um, stamp that I actually had. The video is up on this channel, um, but where you kind of, you know, cut out certain pieces and layer them up. So it's some layers have one layer, some layers, layers have two, some layers have three. And it's a very dimensional um, well the dress that I did but a very dimensional center in this case like if you were to um, cut out the pom-pom on the end of his hat and if you were to cut out the extra little fur around the bottom or the top of his boots or the bottom of his jacket and layer those up two or three times it creates such beautiful dimension and it's absolutely not really a card that you would send through the mail um, but I think that that would be really fun too but for today we're just going really plain and simple and I was super happy with this now I am very, very tempted to get myself another color of red in the Distress Oxide range. Um, this is Candied Apple and it's the only red that I have at all in the Distress Oxide range. So that's what we have to go with today. I did, um, I'm sort of watercoloring, but I wouldn't call it watercoloring because I'm just doing a pretty thick, normal, even layer um, all over his little uh, hat, his little jacket and um, that little slither of pants that's going to show through. If you could, or if you know, give me your recommendation for a green and a red, like for Christmas. Um, I purchased the Distress Oxides, but it doesn't really matter if you do normal Distress. Um, a red in particular that you use, but maybe a red and green combo that you love together um, that would work well. I am very tempted to get myself one more red ink, uh, I think, in the Distress Oxide range. Um, I definitely have noticed over the last couple of years that I have a bit of a gap for it. Um, yeah, so we'll see. Thank you. I would appreciate your recommendations. And I'm going to do his little boots there in just plain black. This is the black soot. I did get a little bit of... Um, hickory smoke distress oxide out. I thought I might add in some grey but I was happy with the black. I do his little belt black as well and then I'm going to take some uh, yellows. I'm going to take mustard seed and a tiny tiny little bit of spiced marmalade just to sort of add a highlight to the bell that he has up in the corner and then I'm also going to do his little belt buckle um, in a sort of gold colour. And again, you can definitely, these are just the colors that I have available. I do not have the full set of Distress Oxides. In fact, I don't even have, I would have maybe a third, I think, probably of what there is available. Um, I don't even know the final number. So I really just make do with what I have and the colors that I have. Um, I'm using some tattered rose for his little face and then a tiny little bit of worn lipstick for his cheeks. Enough that I just actually squeeze the container and add a tiny little bit there to make his little cheeks a little bit rosy um, but yeah I absolutely don't have the full set of anything I don't have the space to store it and I just get what I need really and when I purchase an ink pad I always purchase the reinker. I kind of think of them as one cost um, so if I can't afford to buy the reinker and the ink pad then I just need to wait for a little bit longer um, so I definitely advise that you pick up the reinkers it gives longevity to your ink pads it means that you can do so many more techniques there are heaps of brilliant techniques that you can do with reinkers that are worth trying now I am just doing putting some very tiny little dots in some of that hickory smoke color and I'm putting them onto the fur bits of Santa. So the little like the bottom fur of his jacket and uh, his pom-pom and where his sleeves, but not his gloves. And that kind of represents to me, it makes him a little bit sort of fluffy um, because I'm not going to add any color to those at all. I'm going to leave them white. Um, Anyhow, very, very basic colouring for our gorgeous little Santa, but I was happy with how he turned out, honestly, and I think he looks just fine in the end card and the finishing result as well. Now I'm going to come back to our background that we created because this is all completely dry. So I do want to add a couple of little uh, white splatters into here, and for this I'm going to use, this is the um, Dina Wakeley's uh, Gloss Spray in the white colour. I, now this is way too much, don't pour as much as I did. <laughs> um, just going to get a tiny little bit, and I can use this as is to put a few little white splatters. And I like this one because even on top of Distress Oxides, which are water reactive, 
it's going to stay nice and bright white. Um, I don't really know why it does that, maybe because it's an acrylic uh, base, I'm not sure, but uh, it seems to work really, really well. So that's what I use for my white splashes. Then I'm going to fussy cut out Santa. Again, you will know that if you watch my channel, <laughs> you will know that when I purchase a, a stamp, I want to make sure that I can fussy cut whatever the image is really easily. And this Santa ticked the boxes for me. So I have no idea if they have dies, they probably do, um, but most companies, not all, absolutely not all, but most of them leave a little white edge around the center and I didn't, or around an image, and I didn't want that for today, so I want to make sure I can fussy cut him really easy, and it also saves me the cost of having to uh, think about getting a die as well with this one. And because I don't make too, too many Christmas cards, I find it really hard to justify purchasing dies. Um, but not saying I don't, but it does just means that I have to really think it through and make sure that it's worthwhile for me and that it's a great investment. So here is the card. Remember, this is all directly onto the card base. And I just sort of fold over that scrap piece of paper so that the back stays completely nice and clean. And then this is always a fun part. I love this part. Look at that crisp, beautiful blending line that we have created. And then we are only going to do a couple more little things to sit center upon here and finish off this card. Now in this uh, the stamp set, the stamp set is called Santa Claus Comes Tonight by Picket Vent Studios. And what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to pop Santa on the card and I'm going to stamp him as well. Now this just means that it's going to make my fussy cutting look a whole lot better because any of that grounding or anything else that we cut off or well, anywhere that my scissors went astray, it's going to uh, really hide that for us. So this is going to create a nice little, um, yeah, backdrop that we can put our center down onto. I also chose the Merry Christmas to all and to all a good night. That little sentiment that's going to go down the bottom. Now I did just want to stamp the sentiment and then when it came out so nicely, I thought actually I'm gonna take the rest off because I don't want to ruin it from here. I don't want to smush the words or anything. So I'm just going to take the little sentiment stamp off and then I will do the Santa properly and stamp him out nicely. And as I said, that creates a great base for us to put our actual Santa on. So if you look from the side or anything, you can see all of that gorgeous um, stamped image underneath. You know, there's nothing missing. And then one final detail that I'm going to do to this little Santa is to take a white gel pen. Um, I'm using the Signa um, Uniball white gel pen and I'm going to add in a few little sparkling stars all around him. But remember, this is directly onto the card base and I think this looks pretty good. I was pretty happy with how this gorgeous Santa came out. Out. And adding in a few little stars, if you don't want to draw these by hand, you might have a stamp available or you could do a little bit through a stencil. You could always add some um, modeling paste through a stencil if you had little gorgeous stars like this, but I find it just as easy to do to draw them in myself. And then that is our finished card for today. So if you have a recommendation for the red ink, then let me know, please. I would appreciate that. And then other than that, I thank you so much for being here. I really appreciate it. There will be supplies linked below this video, of course. But other than that, I will see you in the next video. Thanks. Bye.